Play Saves the World, Episode 2. What is play? That's some amazing dancing. Hello. You know, they have chair yoga, but chair dancing is quite challenging. We should you're do really some... limited in your yeah, moves. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm feeling uh, like my shoulders really got to work out there, and uh, <laughs> and my fingers <laughs> through the waves there. Yeah. Right, those who are listening, just to the audio, uh, may wonder what we're talking about. Like uh, Kevin and I like to like to dance. To the video our... too, because I'll probably drop in a the video montage. Okay. Thing. Okay. Good. 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 Anyway, no one sees us dancing. Whether whether you've seen dancing or whether you're dancing right now or or not, um, it is so good to welcome you to Play Saves the World. Hi, uh, thanks for uh, clicking the button, tuning in today to spend some moments with us. My name is Daniel Hilty, and my name is Kevin Taylor, and we are so thankful uh, for you taking part in this little uh, uh, foray into the world of play and the meaning of play for human flourishing uh, episode two of play saves the world um some of us know who are listening already this is this is a a re-theme of a previous podcast that went for over 50 episodes called board game faith but we are expanding into the larger world of play we had our first episode last time kevin what did you what was our last episode about and what did you our think of last it? episode was a zigzag episode Ooh. Because in order to zig, you have to zag. And you got to zag, zag, you got to was... zig. There is That's no right. zig without zag, and there is nope. no zag without There is no, what's the Chinese thing? Fun, uh, the uh, yin and yang. Circle. Yin and yang. I was going to yeah. say feng shui, but that's not it at all. Yin, there is no think... yin without yang. You need the two. So we can't define play without talking about work, strangely. And you can't yeah. define work in some ways without talking about play. But it was easier to start with work. And so we tried to ident identify what work is. That work is generally something that is purposive. It yeah. has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it has a... Um, and part of that purpose is it has a goal that it's trying to achieve, which could be paying the rent. Right, right. Correct? So it's right. instrumental. So it attempts to play through something, right? Or work right. through. I shouldn't say play. I don't. I think I was getting the instrument trumpet thing in my head. Okay, I well, say I just instrument. Didn't know. Yeah, well, no, I it's think. instrumental. It's it's a yeah. It's instrumental. instrumentality. Instrumentality. Yeah. It, it's instrumentality. It's, it's a means toward an end. It's an instrument. It's, that's work is an instrument for achieving a goal. Why did I do this part? This should have been your part. No, I think I'm you're terrible. I think you're killing it. No, I think you're killing no, it. You're no. doing great. After the after we finish recording, I'm jumping out that window. No, no. Can't it's okay. Hey, there's you. a nice bush. There's a thorn bush <laughs> underneath, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I won't just... really be hurt, but I'll just feel pain, which just, is what I deserve punish. for talking about it no, that way. No, it's don't okay. don't punish the flesh. You're you're just <laughs> I affirm you. It was great. But work you, it was great. Work has a means to an end. Right. Right. So you're completing a project for work and that project means that you are paid type thing or you're starting a business. So you're expanding your business, et cetera, et cetera. So work has a has a purpose. It is a means to an end. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. Right. Because work can give us meaning. Uh, we, we take pleasure in creating things and making things and being part of a group or a staff or a team. And it feels good to get paid for your work. I mean, that yeah. can be a sense of pleasure. Yeah, work absolutely. also can be playful. You can approach work as play. Yeah. And I think yeah. about that for say board game creators or tabletop role playing uh, role game play designers. Game. Those sorts of people are combining work and play. They've got to play, they've got to play test the game, but it is their work because it's their main source of income. And they're right, looking right. at how many people bought the game. They're looking at metrics, which isn't really fun. If you think about designing a game and then saying, oh, we only did 10,000 in sales and we were hoping for 15. Right, right. That doesn't seem very playful. It's not. No, and it started no. out as a hobby, right. probably, as a play, like you like to play games. Just like you might start out playing an instrument and then you end up 
playing for the symphony and it's a full-time job and it's not, it's not the same. It's still fun, but it's not the same kind of fun. Right. Right. It's hard. It's hard to nail down exactly the definitions between work and play and where that, that line is. I, I, yeah, we absolutely. heard from a, a listener this past week, uh, John, thanks for listening, John, who said, you know, that's, it's one of his goals has been to try to only say yes to work that he can also find playful, you know? And I, I think Ooh, that was, wow. that was, that's a good goal to have. Um, but yeah, that, so yeah, so yeah, there work can be, can be playful. Um, one person's work can be another person's play back and forth. And it, yeah, as you said, I think it, the difference seems to reside in this notion of intentionality, right? Are, are, are we, are we doing the action or instrumentality are we doing the action as a means to an end or not right yes yeah yes and i think most most of the thinkers in the western tradition have identified the purest joy as something where the pleasure is in the thing itself right where it, it right. is its own end so that's the sense of beauty or goodness is its its own reward you don't in a perfect state of things, in a utopia, you wouldn't be good because you get a star on the chart at the front of the teacher's room. You are good simply because you are good or mm -hmm. honest or mm -hmm. true, right? So being a good person is its own reward. That's a much better much state better than state. you're only good because you're afraid you'll get in trouble or you won't get a star or your parents will be mad at you, right? Right, uh, right. So you create music or you create things Pretty simply things. for the pleasure of it and not for also the goal of paying the bills. Right, right, yeah. I'm getting a paycheck from the symphony orchestra or something. Yeah, and and work, so work is not a necessarily bad thing. It's implied, implied in, the in the Bible that humanity would work, work even without the fall into sin. And you can read those origin ancient stories, Genesis, the early chapters, however you want. You can take it literally or more of as a story. Either way, you get to the same place that place, work is work. not exactly excluded. It just becomes more difficult as a result of the entrance of human sin. Right. And what we see is that work can be oppressive. It can be abusive. Right. Right. Yeah. And there we're thinking of the criticisms that Karl Marx and others had about factory work. We're thinking about where work becomes exploitative, where minimum wage is not a living standard, where people such as in America, we don't really get health care unless you're working for a large company, which is really a bizarre thing. But that's right. kind of the state of reality in America today. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, work becomes a very difficult process. Right. Right. I, 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 I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I think you're right. It's the oppressiveness of it can grow out of this instrumentality of it uh, in a way that that. Um, you know, if, if it's always geared toward some sort of end outside of itself, if it's always oriented towards some sort of end outside of itself, um, then um, it can turn all sorts of other things into means to an end, means to an end or instrumentalize, the word might be all sorts of things. You can instrument analyze people, like you were saying, you know, yeah, just their that, bodies, that, that, their time. Yeah, yeah, has led to the enslavement of people and yeah, mm -hmm. exploitative work conditions. Yeah. Slavery is the cheapest, us. cheapest. Uh, it, it's the cheapest form of human labor because you don't pay for them. Yeah, yeah. So um, in terms, you don't pay them a wage. I mean, you're robbing right. their work. You're getting their work without paying them. So yeah, it makes human beings in service to to an end. To it instrumentalizes them in this right. machine, part yeah, of the machine. They become cogs, it, the cogs in the machine. Yeah. And, and, and on a, just on a less dramatic level, it, it, it robs us of the ability to enjoy, to enjoy the present too, because it keeps right. us focused on this end, this goal that's out here. And if we're always focused on the end or the goal that's out here and everything we're doing right now is simply a means to that end, then we never really get to enjoy what we're mm -hmm. doing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So if you haven't listened to the prior episode about what is work, that gives you a little snapshot, but go back and listen to it. And tell your friends about it. Yeah. And, um, but the takeaway is that work is something that is a means to an end. And work cannot save us. Right. So 
that's all a setup. This is a prequel, Daniel, to our real topic. That's a real topic. Besides our Sith real... Lords. In the prequel is the origin story okay. of uh, Heaven um, Skywalker. That is a pleasing name because of the double K's. Kevin Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it, in addition to being the origin story of, of Kevin Skywalker, is a setup for this episode, which is what is play? What is play? And so I guess, you know, so the first thing to say, uh, jumping off of last episode, is that compared to work, play is fundamentally non-instrumental, right? It is not about a means to an end. It is, in some ways, an end to itself, but maybe we're getting ahead a little bit on that. But it's it's not a means to an end. It's it's not for the purposes of achieving something else that comes later. Um, and that's, I think, an important distinction to make because sometimes we say that, well, why is play important? Sometimes, sometimes we'll say, people will say, I'll say sometimes, well, play is important because it allows me to recharge my batteries so that I can get back and work no, harder. No, Daniel. And no. I, am no. I wrong? No. Yes. So yes. work is not, a play is not just in service to work? No. No, because why? Because it, it, that just instrumentalizes play again, yes. right? It just makes, yes. it makes play a means to an end, which is working better. And yeah. then it's not really play at all. It's just still part of the work process. It's just yes, how we absolutely. recharge. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really dangerous pitfall. I mean, there's truth in the statement. It's not that it's wrong. It's just very dangerous to go down that path because right. then play is instrumentalized and you're really, your main goal is to be a worker versus right. someone who takes joy, yeah. true joy in and of itself in things that are not work. Yeah, that's it a just very turns... dangerous thing. And, and it's a real pitfall of capitalism, which, and capitalism is wonderful. I'm not trying to knock it, but it does have hard edges, which is, the work hard, play hard, which just makes you more and more of a consumer. Right. So you work hard to take lavish vacations, which put you in debt, so you have to work harder. That's a real trap right. to fall into. Seen from that perspective, play really is not play. It's just another part of the work process. It's just another part yeah. of work. Yeah. And and so you never get a break from work. Even your play is in service to the work. Yeah, you're getting um, and you're spending. What's the Wordsworth poem? Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little in nature that is ours, you know, that like getting and spending is a, is a yeah. bit of a trap if that's your main identity of play. Right, right. Which right. happens actually, sadly enough, in the world of play of, in terms of buying yeah. products, which are wonderful, but if you have to buy all the D&D editions and Call of Cthulhu or board games, and we talk about yeah. this, especially with board games, the it can be an expensive hobby, especially if you are always in uh, you know the cult of the new and getting the hot newest game. Yeah, or the hottest, a lot of money. The newest uh, golf club set, or yeah. um, you know, or it, it, it play can be very much consumer driven. <laughs> yes. like everything else we are that we are in life, and this in our corner of the world. Podcast started oh. out as very much a playful thing. It was very indie. The mm -hmm. backbone of it was RSS news readers, which is a format for getting out, letting people know there's new content on a website, and they grafted podcasts on it. It was decentralized, and we're seeing it become more and more monetized. YouTube and Spotify are, mm. um, you know, realizing the money and wanting to monetize it. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and that, that has some benefits, but it also raises some questions. Yeah. I've, I've never found out what RSS stands for. Do you know what RSS stands for? I know it. it, it well, um, Kevin Skywalker is really never went on an adventure because he's a big nerd. It's really simple syndication, something like that. Really? I think so. Really okay. simple syndication, okay. something along those lines. Like it does, it's not a big thing. It was, it was a, it's a very simple thing of getting update. Yeah, okay. instead of okay. having to go to a website to see what's new, which is what we used to do, <laughs> can yeah. you imagine? And <laughs> uh, Web 1.0, this was an idea of like, well, we'll just let you know what's new on the site in text through a reader, and then you can go there to read that article if you want. Okay. Do you ever use okay. RSS news readers? I oh, I so maybe done it at one point in my life, but. No, no, not not oh, really. It's so good. Really. I still I yeah. still have them, and, and white sites still have it because it's not a big deal to support. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I, so, I use a news reader. Reader, like R-E-E-D-E-R on the iPad, iPhone is really nice. Oh, cool. So play cannot be a means to an end and still be play. That's it's it, it, that's kind of the essential yeah, it's definition allergic. of it. It is yeah. allergic to work. So does that make play pointless? And yeah. and yeah. you know, in our show notes we talked about here, uh, maybe. <laughs> on one hand, yes. On on the other hand, maybe not. Um, we have encountered this phrase in discussions before this this word atelic um a meaning without and telic kind of related to the greek word telos meaning your your end your goal your purpose and so play l i c yeah a t e l i c thank you q q q q q it's five q's after it it does have five to make sure you're spelling it in old english please yeah yeah in old english it's ye oldi atelic and um and then fallen thorn god or something. It it's did. Very Viking. It did. Yeah, it's, it's, it did. It's, it's uh, in the original rune, the rune glyphs. Yeah, the rune yeah. glyphs. Yeah, and it was related yeah. to an ant. So the etymology of the entomology, yeah, is is um very interesting. And but that's that's I I that's what I love about these forays with you, Kevin. We can we, we learn all sorts of new things. The utter maybe... accuracy of <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So play is atelic, meaning on the one hand, without without an end, without a goal, without a without a purpose. We shared earlier in a, in a prior episode. Um, those of us familiar with kind of uh, the new um, Christian tradition, New Testament tradition, there's this famous phrase where Jesus says, "Be perfect," and that's what that's the the, the word there in Greek is telos, t e l o s. It's this sense of um, your end, your purpose, your goal, why, why, why it exists. So, so they say play is atelic without a purpose, without a goal. Um, this is something that Oliver Berkman discussed in, in his book, 4,000 weeks, which last episode I incorrectly identified as 8,000 weeks, which is, um, for, uh, for Yoda, I guess, cause he lives longer than human beings do. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but ah, but, that's really good that's uh, a good one that's a good so, move but, uh, but it is the point of the book is the average lifespan is 4,000 weeks so right. you're falling for 8,000 is kind of this point that we all think we have longer so it's a very right. common and I've had that issue too like in your mind getting the title of that book right is surprisingly difficult yeah, yeah because it feels yeah. like it should be longer it should to, be more than 4,000 weeks uh, yeah, your, your, yeah. your error there is, is is not without merit I'll put it that way well, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I at, least, at least I could hope to have meritorious errors in my life. Is well, that, uh, it's not without like merit. That. It's a different type of. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so there are some activities of play that, that genuinely seem are without an end or a goal. Like, for example, um, they talk about walking meditation in, in, in Buddhism, right? Where you just you just go for a walk. It's just an act of meditation. And your goal yeah. isn't to achieve anything. And cri- some it's Christians just... do that too. The uh, Archbishop yeah. Ron Williams does a walking prayer. Or, yeah. or did at one time. You kind of amble and you pray as you walk. With, and you walk with no purpose. Yeah, he's adapted that in a way. Yeah, for, yeah. So, it, it, yeah. Very in some ways, the spiritual tradition of the labyrinth might even kind of be like that as well. Exactly. But the labyrinth is not a maze. You're not trying to find the way out. You're just walking. Right. It's just, mm-hmm. you're just walking. Um, but there are other things outside of spiritual traditions too. I, I know musicians who just talk about noodling on the piano, right? They're just, they're just playing around. They're it just, you know, just kind of flitting from one chord or melody to another. They're really not trying to achieve anything. They're just, they're just noodling on the piano. Um, teasing someone you love, flying a kite, you know, all of these things are just, they're really kind of without a goal, mm-hmm. but they're playful. They're play. Um, and they're meaningful. So on the one hand, yeah, play can be without a point. On the other hand, play can be, can have a point. Um, but the distinction between that and work is, is play can generate its own point, right? Like yes. it's, it, the phrase sometimes is useful as the word is, is autotelic. Like it, it creates its own purpose, its end goal right. in that own moment. And often those goals are so short lived and fleeting, um, that um they see they they are inconsequential 
and yet they're still deeply meaningful, right? Yeah, so it like, creates its own benefits. Yeah. Like it, we wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun, but strangely, you have to have low expectations or go into it in a general, I don't know, like consider a game. If you go into it expecting it'll be the most fun ever, you're probably going to be disappointed. You more have to approach it as entering the game state and, and expecting you know, the game to be the game and there might be fun in it. So you, you go for a walk and you have insight. So play can produce these weird benefits. Right, right. But it's not playful if you ever do it for that purpose. I can give an example, Daniel. And yeah. Daniel and I are Christian pastors, which means yeah. we have to give weekly um, thoughts in a public forum, and those are called sermons. <laughs> I right? would like to hear an example with three points and a poem, please, if you exactly. don't mind. Exactly, three points and a Go poem is the classic <laughs> joke for a sermon. But no, for me, for ideas for sermons, my yeah. best ideas or practicing is often when I'm driving a car. Oh. But I've never actually gotten in the car to say, I need to think about, think through the sermon, I'm going to go for a drive. That would be a little weird. And right, I think it right. probably wouldn't work. But I'm just mm. finding if I'm driving and so my body is occupied in doing something. Yeah, yeah. And my problem solving mind is kind of, and this is a talk among therapists, you have different aspects to your mind. So the problem solving mind is a little occupied with driving then the other parts of my brain can be playful and sort of think, hey, what if you did this? Or what about this? Mm, interesting. And interesting. It always work, yeah. but it's pretty darn effective. And it's better than sitting at a desk going, okay, I'm going to plan this out. Right. And then... And nothing. I don't know. Yeah. Is the that playfulness why... leads to... Uh, if, do you have an example like that of how you can play and maybe generate something that you weren't even intending well, I like it has a benefit, but it's not the purpose of what you're doing. It just hmm. arises. Well, here, here you talk Maybe about the driving walk. example made me think about. You often hear about taking a shower as kind of this spot where you get really <laughs> good ideas, you know. And, yeah. and in fact, that happened this morning. I was taking my shower, shower, and I had an idea for my sermon coming up this weekend. And I, Ooh. when I was done, I wrote it down real quick so I wouldn't forget it. But so is that um, a play? Can is driving a car and a shower? I guess. I mean, if you only took the shower to get clean, that would be work. But if you're taking it partly as a to relax and yeah, yeah, you're not, yeah. you're not, you don't get out of the shower immediately when you're clean. You actually are lingering because you're enjoying the warmth, the steam, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Then it becomes. Yeah, I can see yeah, that. I thought of shower as play. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. But it is like driving a vehicle. It, it's a purpose. Or no, sorry, you're you're you've got some part of your mind is something to do while the rest right. of your mind can freeform. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hadn't considered that. I like that. I like that. So yeah, so so play can generate this kind of sense of of so play can generate its own end, its own goal unexpectedly. Right. Um, and that's generally the... life's higher pleasures. I think that's what most philosophers would say. While it is yeah. pleasurable to do something for a purpose, such as build the Eiffel Tower or build the St. Louis Arch, that's for you. Oh, but, well, thank you for right, the Missouri shout out. 45 or 65, something like that, because I visited. But, but the higher pleasures would be the purposes that are unto themselves. Right, right. Like playing that a piece are of yeah. yeah, or making a piece of art or playing a game. That's right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've used this example in games. There are goals in games, um, and you kind of need that for the, the game to work. The, gen, the games generate their own goals, but those game, but those goals are so fleeting and inconsequential that I mean, in the eyes of the world, they're not the goal. The kind of goals right. like you know, like ending world hunger or things like that. You know, I mean, they're they're just yeah. they're just. They seem inconsequential, fleeting goals. They, they, so much so that they. Well, I've already said it, but yeah, that they they generate yeah. goals, but different kinds of goals. And you think about the virtues. So, First Corinthians thirteen uh, from the New Testament, in the Bible. And I go to this just because it's the stuff I know best. So, if you're from a different place in terms of faith or religious tradition, just substitute. I think there's probably similar things. Um, yeah. But in that the great virtues of the Christian life are faith, hope, and love. 
And that's yeah. always because they are their own reward. They are autotelic. It's yeah. never, well, do those things so you'll get to heaven. Right. Right. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 doesn't phrase it that way. He simply praises them for their own reward. Yeah. So they are yeah. autotelic as well. Have you ever read the book Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers? No. I'm just, I'm, I'm just pulling, I'm sorry, I went off script here. I just finished listening to the audiobook of it. Kristen, my wife, first read it and, and uh, recommended it. It's um, Becky Chambers, by the way, is sidebar. It's a really great author. She's a science fiction author, but they, she's in the genre of what they call like something like steam hope or something like that. Like it's, it's a, it's a futuristic, it, she writes about kind of futuristic science fiction, but it's, it's, it's hopeful and it's gentle and it's really nice. Ooh, I've anyway, never heard of, so instead of steampunk, it's steam hope. Yeah. Something oh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. So cool. I've it's really this. neat. Um, but so this book, um, it's called a Psalm for the Wild Built, and it is about an encounter in, in this future world um, between a monk, human being, a religious monk, and and a robot, and and kind of trying to figure out kind of meaning of life in some ways, and um, and and this is the conversation that you were having, and that and that you just the insights you just shared kind of makes me think about it. This sense of you know, we're so wrapped up in trying to figure out our purpose that it almost kind of becomes oppressive, right? And um, and there is some wisdom in the in the in a more playful curiosity that just that that says, uh, you know what? Let's just why don't we set that oppressive stuff aside for a while and right. just be curious and play and uh, yeah. and find meaning in that. Um, anyway, it's it's a neat book. It's a neat book. I gotta read this. Um, I'm in a book club as maybe my pick. They, all, they oh, often neat. are are baffled by my picks, but this is the greatest title ever: "A Psalm for the Wild Built." All and of the her previous book, book is "The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet." Yes, we that that's a much lo longer book. Uh, okay, this, uh, the, but it is also fantastic. It's hopeful and gentle and and science fiction. -y. It's it's a yeah published by really Tor Books. Like, that's a major science fiction yeah. publisher. We really like Becky Chambers. Anyway, oh. but yes, Yay, so, Becky. So that's maybe the first mark of play is what we might call its non instrumentality. That it is, yeah. or its atelic nature, or its autotelic nature. It is it is not a means to an end. And maybe in some ways, it is it is either without an end or it generates its own end. So mm -hmm. that's maybe the first mark. It's not instrumentality, but there are other marks of what makes play play as well. And Kevin, I, we've talked kind of offline that maybe to figure out some of the other marks, we need to turn to our uh, uh, an old philosopher friend. He, he's the saint in the it's play the saves the world pantheon. He saint is saints, the... we call him. He is it sounds French. Sansou. Are you Sansou? I love Sansou. Bernard Suits, who was Canadian, and they've got French up there, so he probably would appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Bernard Suits attempts to define games in a lovely, interesting, beguiling, and at times frustrating book, just because it's 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 very erudite. So you're going to have to. You have to work to read it, but it's worth it. The Grasshopper. The Grasshopper. The Grasshopper. And what he's riffing on, and you're going to hear how this is informed our thinking once you hear this, there is an old Aesop's fable called the, the is it called the Grasshopper? The Ant and the Grasshopper. The Ant and the Grasshopper. Yep, and the yep. idea of that is the Grasshopper plays in the summer while the ant stores its food, and then when winter comes... The ant has his food, and the grasshopper dies. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely kid's story. You should read it to your children every night and then tuck them <laughs> into sleep. And just, well, you know, I think it will really help them <laughs> sleep <laughs> well. I'm making fun of the fact that it's kind of a horrible story. So the grasshopper, <laughs> like, doesn't he beg him for food? And the ant's like, no, and the grasshopper dies. Yeah, the, the, the grasshopper's like, oh, please give me food. And the yeah. ant said, you should have worked. You should and, have and die, you should have <laughs> die, playful one. So that is Aesop's fable of yeah, the ancient yeah. world. And the point of it is we should work. Right. Right. So it's got a moral to the story. And Suits cleverly flips that around and calls his book The Grasshopper. 
and he still has the grasshopper die, but the point is the grasshopper is more truly alive, and the grasshopper, as a grasshopper, can't work because his ultimate identity is to play. And therefore, which are we? That's the looming question. Are we ants or are we grasshoppers? And I think Suits is trying to suggest we're grasshoppers who sometimes get confused and think we're ants. But our true human identity is as the grasshopper, despite the fact that it can kill us. Would you add? How how is that? What would you add to that? No, I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly right. I just, I I love the premise of that book. Just, you know, what if the grasshopper was right? You know, or at least had, had wisdom that we don't. Right. And, and I love that he doesn't um, change the fact that he dies. He does die. Uh, yeah, um, then he plays on a, yeah, he becomes almost a Jesus figure he where becomes, he dies he and he's resurrected. resurrected. A Jesus figure, yeah. I mean, spoilers, but yeah, he, gets, he raises from the dead. At the end. <laughs> and he's still and he the same guy. Yeah, he's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's so good. That's so good. You know, I mean, and some of our listeners may be hearing this and think, think, well, you know, why are we talking about games? We thought this was a podcast on play, but but really, you can't talk about play without talking about games. I mean, we, it, it, play play is what we do when we do games. Uh, we're it does, and we're not talking about just board games or anything like that. But any kind of, from a broad sense, playfulness and games are two sides of the same coin. We yeah, really I mean, play has thing. to have some rules, right? Or or yeah. else it'd be anarchy. Yeah, you'd run yeah. out and grab a twig and then scream and then throw a brick at a house and then jump on a train. Like it would just be random events. So play's yeah. always got to have some structure to it, whether it's hopscotch or, you know, can you climb this tree? Like everything has a certain scope to it. Is that fair? Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So fact, every play leads... is some game type activity. Right. Right. Which I think leads us to the, to the definition of, what play is uh, that that Bernard Suits eventually arrives at in the in the Grasshopper. But before we get to that, can I can I can I go on a pop culture sidebar? No. Yes, maybe. Okay. All right. We'll see. No. So Let me check I have what Google says. Google says yeah. Yes. What, is, what does Google do, say? Yeah. Is Google okay with that? Okay. All right. I have Gemini I have... says approved, Doctor. That's my your dollar your request. Voice. I, I love your Dalek. We should do a whole episode in the Dalek voice. Oh, um, no one would true. listen to it. <laughs> but we would die laughing. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> what, what do you say about play? <laughs> I cannot speak to that. My plunger is drooping. Because they have plungers on the. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. <laughs> you are irrational. Um. Anyway, but yes. Yeah, so, um. Somehow, uh, much too late, I seem to be going through my killers phase. I've I've discovered okay. the killers. Um, at, the and concept this, or the band? No, 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 the band. The band. Okay. Yes, I was, that, I was that, worried. That my, I needed to call the police. My son was has been into for a while and his friends, but I, I've just recently. But you know, they have they have this old your song. Your question remind me of this: Are we ant or are we grasshopper? Remind me of their old song: Are we human or are we dancer? Are you familiar with this song? No. Are we, <laughs> <laughs> are we, <laughs> Are we human or are we dancer? Um, and I, 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 I thought that it, it's it's a great song uh, with a lot of it's very danceable, and uh, you listen to it and you think the answer is supposed to be dancer. Well, of course we're dancer. You know, we we we're not just human. We're dancer. Um, I was reading the the background of it. Actually, it comes from this quote where um, I forget who it was, but some journalist, a social uh, critic who talked about we our society is just producing a bunch of dancers who dance in lockstep with what um, the government tells us, society tells us. So that's actually what that song is about. It's saying, you know, um, we're going to be human, not dancers. Just as Bernard Suit says, maybe we're supposed to be grasshopper and not and not ant. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, that was a sidebar. Thanks for letting me go down that. Um, but you're right. You're saying that play can't exist without structure, without rules. And that brings us to this definition, right? So, so the point of the grasshopper is he's trying he's trying to come up with a definition of we would say play in in it in, in the book he says definition of games, but he we would say play. He's doing this in response to 
an Austrian philosopher, Ludwig Wittgenstein, who says you can't define games. Bernard Suit says, yes, I'm going to define games. Ludwig but it's really... Wittgenstein is my favorite philosopher. <laughs> Ludwig Wittgenstein? <laughs> Wittgenstein? They do. <laughs> The Why dialogues do, do the tend dialogues, to go up at the end. They always write, they, they, they have, a, they have yeah. an ascending voice at the end of the sentence. Yeah, it's that's almost right. like the speaker is starting to short on their voice box and it just has <laughs> to make the final explosion and stop. And they just stop. Yeah. <laughs> I must get my words out. All right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> my little Kate, because they're little creatures inside these tank machines. So it's like, it's overheating if I talk too long. <laughs> <laughs> this is Doctor Who, and if you're not, yeah. <laughs> the sad bit about Doctor Who is so many people say, I don't even know where to start, so they just don't watch it. And it's kind of sad, because I'm like, oh, just start somewhere. But it's I think because it's been going for so many years, it's yeah, kind of Yeah, we love daunting. the show. This latest season is really good. We, we really I need to start it. I kind of started it, and I don't know. I was in a cranky mood, so I, I, yeah. I just, yeah, I didn't. The show didn't match my mood. I understand. So then I watched the first... Ahsoka, and that didn't help because that was it's. I, that's not. A, I'm sorry, y'all. It's not a good show. I still really? watched. You it, weren't. But, yeah. You weren't fond of Ahsoka. Yeah. You sorry. were or weren't? I I was, but I mean, it wasn't my favorite. But I was just saying. That's you, what I mean. You were not it, like, fond of it. That's what well, you're I still watched it, and it's very watchable. But it's just I don't know. There are bits that annoyed me. Yeah. Yeah. Like like so he's been exiled to this distant world, and then they put the map coordinates to it in a little ball that's hidden in a temple underground somewhere. I don't know. It just had this weird Raiders of the Lost Ark and then Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. So I I told you I was in a bad mood. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fine. It's fair. It's fair. It's fair. You you were so yes, so Suits is spends the Grasshopper book trying to arrive a definition of what we would say is play. And so right. And and he comes to this 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 often quoted definition at the end of the book, that if you get into game studies studies of, of play, I think sooner or later you will encounter, which is, it is the voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles. Oh, so good, it's so good. We need a T-shirt that says that the voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles. That's what play is. That's what Six games words. are. I was trying to That's count. So, so good, yeah. Six words. Six words. And and so much thought into those six words. And you're right. It's, it gets at what you're saying, Kevin, that to overcome unnecessary obstacles, that's talking about rules, right? It's talking about mm. structure. There's um, some structure on some level to every game or every right. playfulness. Right, right. I, I think the classic example he gives is golf. And, or one of the classic examples he gives is the book is, is golf, right? You know, if, if the goal the goal of golf is to get a ball in a hole, there's there are a lot of really easy ways to get a ball in a hole. For mm -hmm. example, you pick up the ball, you walk up to the over the hole, and you put the ball in the hole. But right. that's no fun. And so to make it play, make it a game, he creates this. Un, we create these unnecessary obstacles. Well, no, you have to hit it with your club, and you have to do all of this and that. Yeah, creating unnecessary obstacles, and and overcoming them voluntarily, not out of compulsion, defines play. Yeah, defines versus games. work, where you kind of have to work to pay the bills right but play right. is not necessary at all right so but ironically if it's part of our identity as grasshoppers it is strength it is kind of necessary if we're going to be ourselves it's I will add unnecessary that, that's a subtle necessity yes it's a necessity it's a necessary unnecessity which we're yeah, going to get yeah. into next episode but yes yes so 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 what i hear you saying kevin um is so one of the major th marks of play we get from this is that it is, it's voluntary, right? We're not we're not comp compelled to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You you often bring this up about like professional sports, right? Or um, game designers. This yeah, because of... they really are in this middle ground, or a professional musician. Right. That they right. Most likely started out as a hobby, and that's not denigrating in any way like no. they started out just for the sheer pleasure of it as a something to do you know they were playing basketball as a kid or they were playing an instrument and then it became a job so right. i find that really interesting versus say accounting no one starts that as a hobby you might enjoy numbers or balancing things or getting things right but there's something you, no one starts out as a lawyer as a hobby 
So some jobs are purely trained plumbers, right? It, it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't arise out of something that is playful and it's not a business of play, but sports and music and board game production is play that is also work. Yeah. So I find mm -hmm. that really difficult. And I think musicians are interesting and probably difficult. And some musicians will reflect on that, how, how it's hard to continue to create because they have to pay the right. bills. Right. So the you classic know, it, would be the older band that wants to write new material, but the truth is people only pay for them to tour and play the old songs over and over again. So you end up playing right. the same song 10,000 times. So it started right. out as a spontaneous moment of careful crafting out of love might become, you know, this albatross around your neck of, oh God, we've got to play, you know, do you want to rock again or something? Right, right, right. I have a friend, um, I have a friend, Paul, who, uh, was working, um, uh, stage set up at, at, um, I think it was maybe a state fair sometime in the recent past and mm. Survivor came, um, with their hit, Eye of the Tiger. And, uh, and, and the, and, and which is a fantastic song and he set up, you know, set up for the band and he, he just, he tells the story of how, you know, they go through the whole concert and then at, at the end they say, well, there's probably one more song you're wanting to hear. And then, they, right. and then their closing song is Eye of the Tiger. And, and yeah. you're right. I mean, I'm sure on the one hand, it's, I mean, how amazing is it to have a hit that's so um, wonderful and everybody knows, but it's gotta be, it's gotta be kind of burdensome too. And it, it, yeah, it's now it involuntary. Must feel they must play it. If they didn't yeah, play it, right. people would be outraged. They can't right. want to hear that one right. song from the 80s. So it's now 40 something years old. So it's interesting how often money mm. seems to be the distinguishing mark between play yes. and work. You know, like if, and I don't know what to do with that, but like if we, if, and, and between what's voluntary and not voluntary, we, we rightly or wrongly, we seem to feel like, you know, if we do something for not, if we're not doing something for money, it's voluntary. If we are doing something for money, it isn't voluntary. In fact, I think it's probably how we define volunteering most of the time in our quarter. So, uh, yeah, world. you're right. Volunteering or amateur sports versus professional, yeah. whether you are paid or not. Yeah. And, and so there's a sense of being paid that makes something feel right. Necess uh, necessarily a compulsion that you're compelled to do it. Right. If we're, con if we're saying that something stops being voluntary when you receive money for it, maybe that's yeah. weird. Well, money is the ultimate base exchangeable good that can be used for either life's necessities or its pleasures. I think it's just, it's just the power of money is a way to express a value for something yeah. as well as it's instantly interchangeable. You could take money and you could, give it to a charity or you could buy a soccer ball or you could buy a banana like you could go gamble it i mean you can do so many things with money and the money never cares right it's just a thing right right it's like the ultimate weird exchangeable fiction right, in the sense right. that it resides really based on the the respect towards a certain country's currency yeah and then it even gets weird because i thought I about thought it about i've actually that... preached a little bit about it too mm -hmm. um because it is this weird concept that, and even now, now it's even stranger. It's on a on your phone, like right. sitting in number. So, so more than more half, half of all banking, banking jobs, jobs now, now are IT jobs, because banks right? are basically IT companies. Because money is an IT product; it sits on computer servers. Isn't that That's weird? So interesting. Like you, you can use currency, but it's very you know, it's more and more unusual. Wow, places are cash free. So yeah, that's, money is a strange, strange thing, but, thing, I, think but I think it is think it this is. ultimate exchangeable prioritization. Yeah, you know, yeah. Daniel likes apples, so he buys lots of apples. Right. So your money is also a reflection of your priorities. Mm. So I think that's why. And so you end up doing it for more priorities, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. We need to, ex we should explore the relationship between money and play in a future episode too, maybe. I want to write. Ding, 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 ding. I want to write it down. Write that right. down. In so, turn, Felicia, <laughs> write down R E money play hyper hyper dash. I'm writing it <laughs> down, hyper sir. Dash. Felicia, wake up. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll write it down, sir. Okay, Felicia. So, um, those are my nachos. Put those down. Right. 
That was so not in the, the contract. <laughs> so those are the first two marks of play, we might say. So there, it's the um, it's the instrumentality of it. It's 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 a me. It's not a means to an end. It is uh, voluntary. It's not uh, compelled. And then the last one, again, from Bernard Suit's definition, is that it is unnecessary. Right? It's it's it is unnecessary, and that's closely tied to this idea that it's a, it's it is it is not a means to an end, um, right. because the world will always say the play is not needed, that it is not needed. Right? That it's and so and we to say some it's degree they're right. 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 Like it's, you know, their basic needs, Maslow's needs or whatever is shelter, food, that kind of water, that kind of stuff. Right. right. But, but, but Daniel, go ahead. Yes. It. What? No, but no, what? no. I just watch it. Now you, you go, you're on a, you're on a roll. Do it. No, but I want to see it. if you're thinking what I'm thinking. But it is needed because otherwise we lose our humanity. Right. Yeah. Like that's the weird right. catch. Right. Right. And yes. And I would say exactly. And, and we'll get into this later episode too. And I would say theologically, uh, we also lose the concept of, of grace too. I mean, if everything is by necessity and by right. earning, right. There's no room for grace in that kind of world. Play is um, very gra gracious in that it is empowering and free. Grace is playful in a way that work. Yeah, work yeah. in the sense of earning or exchange value. Yeah. Um, yeah, play is not the same as grace, but it's it's they they are intimate companions. I would say. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the uh, and and the grasshopper has a, a, a dream about this that uh, is haunting. It's for me. It's one of those haunting parts of the books of the book where early on the grasshopper tells his disciples that he had this dream where he goes around the world trying to convince people that uh, everything they're doing is a game or is a play. Is play. He goes to tell the, the um, trumpet player in the orchestra, well, what you're doing is play. And he goes to the carpenter and says, what you're doing is play. And he goes to the banker and says, what you're doing is play. And he goes to the doctor and says, what you're doing is play. And, and he says, in his dream, when people are convinced of his argument, they instantly disappear. And, and he can't, he can't figure out what to, what to do with that. And then at the end, he realizes why that is, is because we cannot bear the awful, or is it wonderful, truth that from a cosmic sense, everything we do is unnecessary. And in the scheme of the cosmos and the history of the world, it's yeah. not going to matter. Right. It, 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 uh, you know, the, if I, I could drop over right now and the world's going to keep turning, the universe is going to keep spinning. So weird. So weird to really ponder. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and if that's true, right, if everything from a, cosmic sense is unnecessary then everything from a cosmic sense can be kind of playful too right you might as well yeah yeah you might as well friend yeah that's it's i need to go and reread that bit i remember being puzzled the few times i did read it but your explanation sounds spot on like i need to go revisit it but yeah that's the weird bit is is we kind of can't handle the reality of play despite its essential thing for us we are such strange creatures we we, we can't handle the awfulness that maybe everything is play which reminds me there's a lovely line in the quran where god says don't yes. you know human that this whole world is a game like a prelude to the next world and so that's a thought in the quran and it also makes me think of if you know C.S. Lewis's wonderful The Great Divorce, which is about heaven and hell, it's not about a marriage of okay, a man okay. and, or two people. Okay, it's about okay. heaven and hell, but it ends with a dream of like chess pieces mm. and then it dissolves. So it also picks up an idea of a game. It's it, a dream it, so sequence. It ends with a dream about chess and then it dissolves? Vaguely. Like there's the sense that everything they're doing, like they are actually 
pawns and sort of a larger cosmic thing. I need to reread it. I'm I'm grasping my dim memory banks, but yeah. Oh, that's so that's so neat. And honestly, I mean, spoilers if you don't want to find out. Maybe I shouldn't say this to you. Um, find out the end of the Psalm for the Wild Built. Um, maybe I won't go into details. But they they wrestle with this kind of stuff at the end of that. It's it's a novella, but it's of that work as well. The sense of uh, huh. Um, we can't stand the idea of. an ultimate purposelessness or a necessity mm -hmm. in, in our lives. And um, yeah. And uh, it's, 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 that's a, that's a tough thing to wrap our head around my head around. So we truly are strange creatures in the universe. Yeah. We're, we're creatures that need to work and, find what we do so very important and we can't handle any any suggestion it's not and yet if we actually pursue that completely we kind of go a li little batty because we actually yeah, need to yeah, play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so our priorities are so strange. We're so kind of yeah. bent. It does make us unique. This, this is, yeah. I might give away too much, that is a line from, from this book, A, a Psalm for the Wild Built. The robot says, oh. you know, like there's no other a, a, what a strange animal humans are because there's no other animal that feels like they have to find their purpose in life. A bird doesn't feel like it has to find its purpose in life. A dog right. doesn't feel like it has to find its purpose in life. A crab, a, you know, its purpose is to be a crab, you mm -hmm. know, and it's the purpose of the bird is to be a bird. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in some ways, why do we give ourselves, take on this oppressiveness in a way of trying to, to yeah. do that um well, i'm thinking not to go too deep but i'm thinking of pascal you ever read pascal 17th century no, catholic no. mathematician no, christian say more. philosopher yeah he's really interesting but he well he just well, plays he just on this that more. we are kind of these weird monsters because we are half animal half angel type like we've we can soar but we also are capable of such mm. kind of cruelties and um, mm. he's got the famous, got the famous line, line that we we would all of our problems our would problem. go away if we could just sit quietly in a room type thing <laughs> like we mm, you know we mm. uh, we're just such strange creatures and he ultimately mm. le leads from a religious christian point of view that leads him to say we can only find our rest in god so it's very saint augustine if you're familiar with that thinking but he revels right. a okay. bit more in how strange we are that we're We are terrified, terrified of some of things, but we don't want to face real reality either. Mm. Right. So we are terrified of not showing up for work and getting fired, but then we don't consider the issues of final destination or heaven and hell type thing. Mm, mm, interesting. Like we worry about the wrong things. Right, right, right. Anyway, yeah, so a little well, off topic, but Pascal, if you're very curious, I'm sure it's all on the internet, and he's very readable. He's, cool. you know, he's, he's not a hard read, given that he's 400 years ago, but he's very interesting. He's very uh, wild. Thank you. No, I'm glad you brought that up. That's very relevant. Thank you. Yeah, I think okay. I think the, the programming language is named after him because he was a bright mathematician. Oh, ah, interesting. Pascal. Okay. I think, I think it's because he's also a math guy. Oh, yeah. that's cool. That's cool. So, Kevin, bringing it all together... Let's bring it together, Daniel. What is our, what would, what's this definition of play that we're, that we'd say, what are the, so these, so what is play and bringing all well, this play is not together? Yeah. It's not work and work is not play. So it's the opposite kind of, although they can, and they can strangely influence one another. But work, again, doesn't save us. And work is always a means to an end. Play strangely is without a means to an end it's non-instrumental it doesn't do something to get somewhere else it's its own reward it's voluntary it's something you choose to participate in or else it would be oppressive and work and it's unnecessary mm. yeah that's and so and i would add <laughs> that it accepts certain weird obstacles like color this but stay in the lines right or right, yeah win at monopoly but you have to go around this direction 
Right. And you can't right. just take money from the bank. Right. right. You have right. to have all these rules. See if you can see how high you can climb in this tree. Right. It or consists hopscotch. of hop on one leg in these boxes and clap yeah, your hands. Yeah. Right. Play consists of unnecessary obstacles. Yeah. Of, of, of play with these trucks, but don't just throw them against the wall, roll them around. Right. So right. Every, every child, every person accepts certain weird things about how things work. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Rolls. Cool. Yeah. And so from, from that definition, all sorts of things can be play, right? If we volunteer at a community orchestra or choir that can mm -hmm. be play or a day of golf or walking in the woods or writing a love poem or spontaneous yeah, dancing. It, and again, don't let the idea of organization confuse you because play doesn't just mean, you know, running around hollering or something like sometimes we think yeah. play has to be real. Uh, what am I training? Like kind of out Unstructured. of or yeah, spontaneous. But play yeah. can be very much structured, such yeah, as yeah. participating in a community choir or community play, um, community actors. Like you have meetings, you have rehearsals, you have practice. That's just like playing Monopoly. It's structured, but that yeah. doesn't mean it's not play. Right. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, if the... it if play is always unstructured, then it would just be random events. But it right. must have structure or else it would be total randomness and we would just be weirded out by it. Right, right. Blue! 15, Blue. Blah, 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 blah. Right, just random events. I, you know, there's, you, you know, they, they, I, I think um, people who know a lot more about play and play therapists and things like that will talk about something called unstructured play, the importance of unstructured play for children and, and, and adults as well. Hmm. But my impression of that is that even that, there is structure. It's just structure that is uh, generated at the moment, right? Yes. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, like that's auto telic. Yeah. It generates its own structure. So that's yeah. like driving the car. Like, like yeah. it's sort of, and then, well, maybe it's not, but driving the car and then thinking about a, 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 a speech you have to give or a sermon or something you have to do. Um, yeah. That's kind of, arises from the moment so yeah maybe it's unstructured so you are given some balls and you figure out what to do but but yeah eventually we will come up with some sort of a pattern yeah yeah so it could be structured or unstructured but it's all play yeah, yeah. and you know in these kind of activities they're just they um we we're talking about i mean you said this earlier kevin i mean they're they're the he said at the beginning of the episode that, you know, philosophers and thinkers and spiritualists uh, have said for ages that these are the kind of activities that allow us to be the most human, right? That, that bring us mm -hmm. the most, ironically, meaning. Um, and, and, and yet, we call them unnecessary. And, and so, in a way they are the necessary unnecessary to be human right and it's yeah. uh, which it's kind of what we're talking about in our next episode which is that we are you know we are wired for play right that this we are to be human it is necessary for us to be to engage yeah. in all of this unnecessity we yeah. are the grasshopper yeah. despite yeah. having to be ant like we ultimately are grasshoppers and not ants that's the point of the yeah. grasshopper book the revenge yeah. of the grasshopper. Yeah. Yeah. Except yeah. We're the, wired for that. And, and you can disagree with it and, and argue, but you're wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you're just wrong. Like we have to play. Sorry, Daniel. What were you going to say? Yeah. No, no. I was just going to say, no, we are, we are grasshoppers, not ant, except for my, my aunt Susan, who actually is, is my aunt. And, and is a grasshopper. Bad. Interesting. Very strange yeah, yeah, story. No, she, she embraces the, yeah. Yeah. So that's next episode. I think she we're actually is a grasshopper. Play. She lives on your shelf. She is. She is. I, I, uh, I periodically will bring grasshopper food to her. Do you know, I don't know what she gives the worst Christmas presents. She does. You know what her Christmas present is? What? She just, uh, she just makes that chirping sound all night long and she's, and right. she thinks it's an act of love, but it keeps us up all right. night. And we're like, come on. Right. Right. Exactly. Come on. We're trying to sleep. And you and think it's like, a don't Christmas you like it? gift, but you're not sure she understands calendars. Right. So it's because unclear whether it is a gift. She's a, gr a grasshopper. Yeah. Okay. Not a metaphor. So, oh, grasshopper. <laughs> so our next episode, we are wired for play. The the necessity of the uh, unnecessary. Yeah. Um, 
So, Kevin, I have an idea for our sign off. Okay. Was there anything else before, before our sign off? Well, uh, for, I want to say thanks to John for listener comment and oh, love yeah. to hear that. So, how can they do that, Daniel? Yes, um, they can reach us at um, uh, play saves the world at gmail.com. Play okay. saves the world at gmail.com. We love to hear from you all. So, yes, please, please uh, Questions, let us know what thoughts, you think. Ideas, stories, yeah. anecdotes. Yeah, We're let us know. We'd agree, love to hear, disagree. Hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. But can I, I will think add to uh, yes. one other bit? Do you think this podcast is player work? We're not getting paid for it. Um, yeah, that was going to make a little fundraising pitch. We're definitely playing, <laughs> actually losing money on it, and that's okay. We are, but if we you want to help yeah, us yeah. not lose money on it, uh, you can you can send us a little cheddar, as the kids say, via mm. our Patreon. Yeah, and yeah, links will be so Patreon uh, help help cover some of the costs of podcast hosting and things like that. So we would yeah, appreciate you. that so much. Yeah, yeah, it is not it's it's it is not. Um, without some cost to produce this podcast so th yeah yes, thank you but thank we you do it that. because we want to and it is play so we are we are prepared for those costs but yeah, yeah. if you want to help let it reach out i think we should sign off as daleks oh, was, that, was that your was that your thing it was my idea it is logical strange i have lost my dalekness no <laughs> now i'm just like a fool now I'm just talking like a... Wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. no. <laughs> Dalek transformation incoming in five, four, four three, two. Three, two. Transformation Lord, complete. Transformation <laughs> complete. Please destroy Kevin Skywalker as inferior product of Kevinness. Exterminate. 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 <laughs> what would Luke Skywalker do against a Dalek? Um... I don't know if the uh, if the the plunger and the and the lightsaber are really fair. It's like bringing a a knife to a gun. I, yeah, well, right. But they they do have well, it's lasers. It's like bringing a plunger have, to a gunfight. <laughs> they do have lasers too, don't they? Yeah, they do. They introduced know. some lasers. Yes. Yeah. Maybe Laser the plunger not... has anti force properties. In the, what does in the, the plunger do? Yeah, they never. Not, I've never no seen one knows. The plunger actually it's used. Moved. I mean, it literally is a plunger. The BBC yeah. had no funding. Yeah. That's what's great about Doctor Who. They they said you see this door box, that's a spaceship. Right. And you right. see this weird metal thing with a plunger, that's a monster. It could be that's that all the took. Daleks just have a lot of um clogged toilets. And so they're just always walking around with plungers. But then how just... do they use it? Because they'd have to <laughs> lean down because the plunger's in front. So they have to lean it takes someone you know must Daleks get me and... over. <laughs> get me you know over they... into the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many I have Dalek joke, you ready? How many Daleks does it take to unplug a toilet? Two how many? I am playing at the embassy suites all week. Come or be exterminated. Try the chicken. <laughs> okay. I think we probably ought to end this. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. We love you. Bye. Bye-bye.